Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of our web design tutorial series. Today I will teach you how to create this. A minimalist portfolio with subtle animations and sophisticated SVG shape in the background. I like it a lot. I am Michal from MDBootstrap.com and without further ado, let's jump into the code. In this tutorial, I will use Material Design for Bootstrap, which is a free library that greatly extends the capabilities of regular Bootstrap and provides many useful features, like for example, better look, additional components, free templates, and even a free hosting for your projects. To download Material Design for Bootstrap, go to mdbootstrap.com and click big blue Get Started button. Then click big red Download button, and unzip the package. Then open it in your favorite code editor. I am using Visual Studio Code. To launch MD Bootstrap project, you need to open it in the browser. You can do it simply by dragging and dropping index.html file into the browser window. If you use Visual Studio Code Editor, you can also install extremely useful extension called Live Server. It enables a live reload feature, so it will refresh the browser anytime you change anything in your code, so you don't need to do it manually. At the beginning, let's remove an existing content of index.html, so that we have an empty canvas ready to start new project. Select everything in between the Start your project here comments, Remove it and save the file. Now we are ready to start our work. Let's start by dividing our project into header and main. As you can see here, in the header we need to create a completely transparent navbar divided into three sections, left, center and right. Let's take a look at MD Bootstrap documentation. So go to mdbootstrap.com and in the search box type navbar. And here at the very end of this page we can see advanced examples and Facebook style navbar. So it's something what you are looking for, a navbar divided into three sections. Maybe let me just make the screen bigger so you can see the three sections. So let's copy the code of this navbar and let's paste it inside of our header. Now we actually have a navbar with three sections but a lot of customization is still ahead of us. First let's remove unnecessary elements. We definitely don't need this search box. Get rid with it. And then we don't need all the these icons here because we'll place our logo here and on the left instead of these icons we'll place simple links. So let's remove all these links here. And then on the right elements we don't need this avatar neither. And let's just let's just keep only this single icon. So this plus and let's remove all the other icons. Now let's switch the positions of the left and the center elements. So let's cut out the center and let's replace it with the elements which was previously on the left, so our logo. Next let's add two links to the section on the left. So to add link 
in the bootstrap navbar we need to create li element and then let's add a class nav item let's set a margin 3 to the right and margin lg on the large screen then inside of this element let's create a link with a class nav link and let's make it bolder by adding class fw bold let's type some text and then let's copy this and add another text for example contact next let's take care of the right sections as you can see here we want to have uh, social icons here so instead of uh, instead of this plus icon let's change this class FAS to FAB which stands for brand and let's rename plus circle with Facebook if you want to see all available icons that you can use in your projects, go to mdbootstrap.com and in the search box type icons. Then scroll down a bit and here you can see the list of 1541 icons. And if you type Twitter, Dribble, GitHub, you will find all the links here. So, coming back to our project, let's copy this four more times. No, sorry, three more times because we need Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and Dribble link. But you can place whatever icons you want here. So, Twitter, GitHub, Dribble. And maybe let's change the size of the icons from LG just to regular size. So we need to remove these FALG classes. Next, let's add some margins to the navbar. So instead of container fluid, let's stick with container. So we have a margin on the left and on the right. Then let's remove this bg light class which applies a light background to the navbar because we don't want any color and to remove a shadow we need to apply a class shadow zero and the last thing i want to do in this navbar is to adjust a bit our logo so here let's increase the size to 30 let's say and maybe let's add margin top one class to add a little margin on the top and because the entire composition will be black and white let's also remove the colors from mdb logo and we can easily do this by applying Oh, let's remove this margin top two pixels this inline css and instead of this let's apply a filter gray scale 100 percent and now it looks perfect one more thing because i noticed that after removing this inline css with margin top now i don't have enough space on the top of the logo so here let's add a class well we'll stick with mt1 uh, on mobile but let's add a margin top on large and bigger screens to 3 so it will have more space on large screens but on mobile it will be small now we can move on to the next section so here inside of main elements let's create a container and then let's create a section oh, 
let's comment it as intro. And below let's create another section and I will name it simply content. Let's have a look at the portfolio. So now we need to create this heading and subheading. So inside of intro section, let's create H1 class with immortal John Doe. And then below, let's create H2. Let's type some random text. And now we need to add a few classes to this section itself. So text center to center the text and text black to highlight this text. All other text will be this dark gray, but this heading and subheading I want to be black to just to stand out. Let's add a big margin bottom because we'll need this later. And I think we also need to add some margin bottom to the header section. So let's do it now. And I think MB5 is okay. Additionally, some margin bottom to the H1 would be also nice. And before. And now let's move on to the content section. We need to create we need to create a grid here with three columns inside. So let's do it now. The first column three units wide, the second six units, so the biggest column, and the last one with three as well, because as you remember in Bootstrap Grid, all the columns need add up to 12. Next, let's add the content to the first column. So paragraph with a heading biography. And below another paragraph with some lorem ipsum. Maybe a bit shorter text. And now let's add a few classes to our paragraphs. Let's mute this text. And let's also make it uppercase. And let's increase the letter spacing to white and let's add margin bottom 2. And then our lorem ipsum, I will just add margin bottom 5. Then let's copy this two more times. Let's change biography to contact Let's type some address be air to break the line. And the phone number And here let's replace biography with services, web design and BR, web development and break the line, consulting.
Yep, pretty much the same. Now let's take care of the image. So this is the most important part of portfolio, so the author itself. I found this image on Unsplash, but you can choose whatever image you like, of course. Let's create IMG element and then let's paste a source link and we'll need a few classes. W100 to set 100 width of available space to the image and then let's also add an ID to this image as main image because we'll write a few line of custom CSS. So here inside of the head sections section let's create style tags and then let's set a border well actually we don't need to add the border radius via CSS because we we can use a bootstrap class for this I forgot about this so border I'm sorry rounded circle is the class all right now coming back to CSS let's grab this image by ID let's add a border to pixel solid HSL 0 0 85 so very light gray and then let's also add some padding 20 pixels and now we can enjoy this nice border around the image. Now I thought it looked like a pictures on graves, but well, that's the style. We have the last column to fill in. So we'll create these stats. Let's create a paragraph with a class or actually let's add a text first years of experience and then let's add class text muted text upper case ls wide margin bottom 2 and then let's add another class with a number 6 six inside and class margin bottom five and let's style it to look like like h1 heading let's copy this three more times and here let's type satisfy customers below let's type commercial projects and at the end site projects and let's align it to the right so to the column class we can add text center to center it on smaller screen on smaller screen sorry and on the bigger screens we want to align it to the right so we need to add a class text lg and and actually we should do the same with the left column so on the smaller screen we should center it and on the large screens 
we should align it to the left. So, all right, it should be not left, but start. So if you resize the browser window, you can see that on smaller screens, it's center, but on the right, on the large screens, the left column is aligned to the left and the right column is aligned to the right. Now it's time to add SVG shape to the background. So adding SVG to HTML is really simple, but to create the shape, you need to use some external tools. So for the sake of simplicity of this tutorial, I have prepared an SVG shape that you can use in your project. In the description of this video, you will find a link where you can copy and paste the SVG. So let's grab this and above the header, let's paste it. As you can see, it was added without any problems nicely and smooth. We just need to adjust it a bit. And here you can see the actual SVG. So it's not really human readable. So that's why you need an external tool to create SVG. But after you have this basic shape, you can easily customize it. So for example, let's change the height of the shape from 600 to let's say 1000 and maybe 1100 all right here you can change the color of the shape so we are using gradient here so for example let's for a second change the one color and you can see it's very dark now and you can easily manipulate it according to your preferences. By the way, anytime you need to choose a color palette for your project, I strongly recommend you to use MD Bootstrap Color Scheme Generator. So go to mdbootstrap.com and in the search box type Color Scheme Generator, generator and here after picking one color, it can generate you a different palette based on the color theory. But coming back to our project, let's stick with this light, nice blue. And one more thing, I think it's a good idea to hide this SVG color on a mobile because it doesn't look really good right now. It's fine on large screens, but on mobile it should be hidden. So here, let's add a class to SVG element display none, but display LG block. So now if we resize the window, you will see it disappear on smaller screens, but appears back when we make the screen bigger. There is one more improvement we can make. So let's align the content of the left and the right column exactly to the middle. So the entire composition is perfectly centered. And we can easily achieve this by using Flexbox utilities. So to the row element, let's add align items center class. So we don't even need to add a deflex to enable flexbox because row element in a bootstrap already enables enables uh, flexbox so after saving the file you can see it's perfectly aligned to the middle and it's time for a final touch animations so coming back to our custom css let's create a class fade and let's add animation duration to one second and animation fill mode to both. So I'm not going to explain in details how animations in CSS works because we'll need another long tutorial for this. So right now you, you just need to trust me. It's um, okay. And if you want to just follow along with me. So let's add padding to auto 
and animation anime oh, sorry I cannot I cannot pronounce it animation name to fade in and then let's also add a delay fade delay I forgot dot fade delay 200 to animation delay 200 milliseconds let's copy this few times animation delay 400 600 800 and 1000 for one second now let's add the keyframes and 0% Opacity zero to opacity one. So uh, our animation will basically fade from zero opacity to one hundred percent opacity. So let's see if it works. Let's add a fade class to SVG element. And yes, it works. So let's add let's add a fade class to the header. And then let's add fade and fade delay. 200 to the intro section and then let's add fade and fade delay 400 to the first column and I will copy this to make it quicker fade and 600 delay and the last column Eight hundred. That's really nice. By the way, did you know that thanks to MD Bootstrap, you can use free hosting for your projects? We call it MDBGO and it's really great. Visit mdbgo.com for more information. In the description of this video, you'll also find a link to the detailed tutorial on how to use MDBGO hosting and how to install MDB CLI which is a fantastic and free supporting tool that provides many useful functionalities. Now, let me just show you how easy it is to publish our newly created project on the internet thanks to MDB Go. I already have MDB CLI installed on my computer, so now all I need to do is to run my terminal and then I need to enter the path of the project I want to upload. So here is the directory where we have downloaded the MDB package and where we have been working during this tutorial. So let me just copy this path and let's enter this. And now I need to type only a single command MDB publish and I will choose NPM package manager and then all I need to do is to choose a name for my project. I will name it simply portfolio. Then let's accept all other options and after a few seconds my project is available in the internet at this link. Let's see if it works. And yes it does. That's super fast and extremely useful. That's it for today. 
Let me know in the comments if you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.